In this uh, video we will go through an entire example, we will first do some uh, analyzing and then we go further with creating an ER model. Then we will let Irwin create a physical model. As an example we will look at several sensors at uh, different uh, locations, as uh, illustrated here. And at each uh, location we can have uh, several kinds of um, sensors within different uh, categories and we will uh, at some location uh, be able to um, store information about the location before we register any sensors. And since uh, the size of the locations can differ, we also uh, want uh, to register the size of the location. And at a certain time uh, we want to be able to uh, measure values from uh, several uh, sensors and also uh, from uh, sensors located at uh, different uh, locations. So, uh, this is an overview of what we are going to store in a database and then we have to create uh, an ER model. First we will uh, summarize uh, what kind of data we need to um, store in our database. We need some data about uh, the sensors. For instance we need a sensor ID to um, identify each sensor. We also uh, need to um, categorize uh, the sensors to tell if they are temperature, humidity, light etc. And we can uh, store uh, something about their range. Maybe we want to store the unit uh, they use. And uh, we know that uh, sensors can be placed at different locations. So we want to store something about the locations. And then we need a location uh, number. We can use uh, one, two, three and uh, so on. The locations also uh, differ in size. So uh, maybe we want to store something about the size of the location. At uh, certain timestamps we want to measure different values. So we need to store a timestamp and we need to uh, of course store the values that are uh, measured. When we create the model then maybe we find some uh, more data we want to store. Uh, if we follow the modeling rules and make a good uh, structured model, then it's normally easy to add uh, more entities and more attributes uh, to the model later. Now we are ready to make an ER model and we will um, use the template that we created in an earlier video. We go to File and uh, New. Here we can select the templates and we select the template we created and click OK. And uh, here we have the drawing area and uh, up here we have the tools we need to create uh, the model um, elements. And we start by selecting this uh, entity and uh, click once on it and uh, click once on the display area. And from our analysis we can see that uh, sensor and location and measure will be natural entities. And uh, maybe we also uh, want to have uh, an entity for category. So this is a part of uh, the analyze uh, to find out uh, which entities and uh, which uh, attributes uh, we need to store. I named this uh, first entity sensor. And uh, about uh, the sensors I want to have uh, a sensor ID to identify each uh, sensor. So I named the first attribute, the key attribute for sensor ID. We use the tab key to jump from uh, part to part within this entity. We have uh, three parts. We have this uh, name part and we have uh, the key attributes here, the identifiers, and we have uh, the non-identifier attributes down here. So we, it is uh, divided into three parts. So I click uh, the tab key and we wanted to register the units. And now I want one more non-identifier attribute and then I use the enter key like this. Then I can uh, name this attribute range. And when I'm finished I click once outside the entity and one more time and then we have uh, unselected it. If I regret I can uh, click on this unit and then I can click uh, the delete button and it will be removed. I can also use control set to undo. And we also have this to redo and undo up here. And we can also drag and drop. So if I wanted unit to be part of the identifier, I could uh, drag it up here. So that's uh, also a possibility. I can move it a bit. Now I want uh, three more entities. One to store information about the location of the sensors and want to uh, store information of the measurings. And I, I also want uh, a category, this temperature, humidity, etc., which I can make a relationship to from this uh, sensor uh, entity. When I want to place uh, more than one entity, I can hold down the control key. When I click this uh, entity icon and I keep holding it down, then I can, as long as I hold the control key down, place more than one entity, as many as I want. And I've Finished, I click the escape button. About uh, the locations, I wanted uh, to store a unique uh, location uh, number. 
and uh, also an attribute where we can uh, register the size of the location. This location number should be an uh, identifier attribute and this uh, size should be a non-identifier attribute. First I click once on this entity and then one more time on this uh, name field and then I will be able to write the name of it. I name it location and click the tab key, the tab letter key. Then we can specify the identifier attribute and we can um, name it location number. I click the tab key. There we want it as a non-identifier attribute. We want it to register size. And then I click outside this entity. For a measure, I want uh, to use a timestamp as a, an identifier attribute. And I want to register a value as a non-identifier attribute. First I click once on this and then once more on this uh, name field and we name it um, measure. And then click the tab key and we define the identifier which we name timestamp and then the tab key and we want to register a value for each uh, timestamp. So this is the non-identifier part of the entity and I name that attribute value. And I click once and twice outside to unselect it. And the last uh, entity is the category entity. I also could have uh, chosen to have this as an attribute inside here, but uh, I want to have it as an own entity because then I can use this as a lookup table. For instance, if you want to have a, a combo box which uh, retrieves all the category values, then it will be practical to have those in an own entity. And it will also ensure that um, it's only the correct values that are registered if we have a foreign key from sensor to this category, because then we are not only allowed to register values here that are registered in this category entity. So it can uh, serve uh, several purposes. I click uh, at this name part and specify the name as a category and click the tab key and here we will only have one attribute and that is an identifier and we name it category type. We could have chosen to have a category number and then the type but now I'd use only the category type as an identifier. And the next thing to do is to create the relationships between them. In this illustration we see that uh, at one location we can have uh, many sensors but each of the sensors will be located at exactly one location so that means that uh, this is a one-to-many relationship each of these uh, entities uh, have their own unique number so they are able to identify themselves uh, uniquely and then we can use a non-identifying relationship we go up here and um, click on this non-identifying relationship which will be a dashed line. And we always draw from the one side to the many side. And we have that uh, one location can have many sensors. So I hold the left mouse key down and drag and drop from location to sensor. And then we will see that we have a one-to-many relationship between them. We can read it like this, that uh, one location have zero, one or more sensors, while one so sensor is located at zero or one location. And the zero means that we are allowed to register null values. Which means that if we have a sensor and we haven't found the location for it yet, we can still register the sensor. And we looked at the rules for one-to-many relationship earlier in another video. And there we saw that in this logic model, we will not show any foreign keys. But the identifier on the one side of the relationship of a one-to-many relationship will become a foreign key on the many side and we can go to the physical model up here we can change to physical model and then we will see the foreign keys now we see this uh, one to many relationship here and we see that location number has become a foreign key down here which is referencing the primary key in location and then i go back to the logical model now we will have a look at uh, the relationship between sensor and category in this illustration, we see that we have uh, sensors of different kinds, different categories, humidity, temperatures, lights, etc. But one specific sensor must be of exactly one category. So also here we, ha we will have a one-to-many relationship. One sensor must be of uh, one specific category, while one category can be related to many sensors. And each of these uh, entities is able to uniquely identify themselves with uh, their identifier. So we can also here use 
a non-identifying relationship. And we draw from the one side to the many side. So we draw from uh, category to sensor. In this case, I don't want zero or one because if I register a sensor, I want it to be categorized. One sensor have to be of one specific category. And to change this one, we can double click on uh, the relationship. And here we see that nulls are allowed. But if I go over here and uh, change that to nulls are not allowed, then I can close it. And I will see that this has changed from zero or one to exactly one. And I can double click it again and look at this other relationship just to show how you can change it. Down here, I see that the, this cardinality is zero, one or more, but it can be changed to one or more or zero or one. But now we want to leave it as it is, as zero, one or more. And I click uh, close. If we have a look at uh, the physical model, I change to physical model. Then we will see that uh, this category type on the one side has become a foreign key on the many side, which then will reference the primary key here. So is the name temperature is registered in category and we try to write temp in sensor instead of temperature, then the foreign key will try to reference something that doesn't exist and the, the database management system will report an error. Then we will be assured that only legal values will be registered for category type in this sensor entity. I go back to the logical model and we will have a look at the sensor and measure. Each time we measure something, we can uh, measure values from uh, several uh, sensors. And for each uh, sensor, we will also measure several values. This will be a many-to-many -many relationship. So between sensor and measure, we want a many-to-many -many relationship. And we will find that one up here, many-to-many. -many. And we drag and drop the relationship. We can move this a bit that it's easier to see it. I can click on this uh, many to many relationship indicated with a crow foot in each end and I go to the menu and here I find resolve all transformations. So I click on this one and a new entity will be created. I will see that this entity has uh, no identifier but it has uh, this uh, identifying relationship to sensor and measure which means that uh, the identifiers from these two, sensor ID and timestamp, will become new attributes in sensor measure. And they will also, since it's identifying relationships, it will also become part of the identifier. So when we come to the physical model, then we will see that uh, the primary key in this sensor measure will be a combined primary key consisting of sensor ID from sensor and the timestamp from measure. So that is how a many-to-many -many relationship is resolved in the physical model. I'll go back to the logical model. And uh, here we can also register more uh, non-identifying attributes if uh, we want to. We can also change the name of this if we want a better name. Maybe we should call it log. So I click two times on it. On it. Don't double click, but click two times. And then we can register a new name. And if I go to the physical model now, I will see that it has changed also here. If I go uh, back to the logical level, then I will see one problem with uh, this model. And that is uh, that the uh, value is uh, inserted as a, an attribute in the measure entity. And that means that since the uh, timestamp is uh, the primary key or identifier here, I will only be able to measure one value for each timestamp. And we wanted to measure many values for each uh, timestamp. And to do that, I have to have the value attribute inside the log entity. Because in log, we have a sensor ID and timestamp as a combined primary key. And for each timestamp, it will then be possible to register many sensor IDs. So if I click one time on value and one more time, then we will see it will become a gray uh, background. Then I can drag it over to the non-identifier part of the log entity. And then if I go to the physical model, this should be updated and it is. I have value here and I see that I have these two as a combined primary key. We can now see that uh, we, it is also unnecessary to have timestamp inside the measure entity in an own entity 
unless we have to register other attributes uh, related to each timestamp. But we don't want to do that. Then we can go back to the logical model. Now I want to, to delete uh, this entity because I don't need it. But I need the timestamp in uh, combination with sensor ID uh, in this uh, log entity. So I click one time on timestamp and one more time so that the background becomes uh, gray. And then I drag this identifier over to log so that it will be an identifier inside log. And since we have this uh, identifying relationship, we know that also sensor ID from the one side of this will become in and be part of the identifier in the, the log entity. So when we go to the physical model, uh, we will still have that the timestamp and sensor ID in combination will be the primary key as we see here. And uh, now I can uh, delete this uh, measure entity because I don't need it anymore. So I click the delete button and delete it and then we have simplified our model. The last uh, thing I have to do is to uh, define the data types and the data uh, types are um, needed in the physical model before we are going to create uh, tables. Even though they are needed only in uh, the physical model, I advise you to define them in the logical model so that uh, the two models uh, remain consistent. To change uh, the data types, we right click over an entity and select attribute properties. And here we can see all the attributes and uh, their data types. And since we use the template with the uh, char 30 as a default value for uh, data types, all will have a uh, char 30 until we change them. So if I want to change uh, sensor ID to um, integer, I click on this uh, arrow and start writing I N and then we will have an integer down here and I click the enter key. So now I see that this is changed. I can close this one. If I go to uh, log, right click and click uh, select the attribute properties. Then timestamp, we can uh, use a date time value. All these uh, date time, all these uh, date time alternatives will become uh, date time in the physical model. So I just select the first of them. And for the values, we are going to measure temperatures and humidity, etc. We will not use uh, carry 30, but probably float will be a suitable data type. So I start to write FL and then I will see float down here and I click enter. I can also change uh, this uh, location number to integer, close. And now if I go to the physical model, I will see all the data types that I've changed are updated in the physical model. And now we have a good starting point for Irwin to create a script that will uh, generate the table structures in, for instance, uh, SQL Server. And in another video, we will look at how to do that.